Hello guys, it's Shrimp Time here and today we are going to continue our last uh, video about uh, getting the best results in keeping shrimps and we are going to continue our video about uh, the nitrogen cycle which you can find here on the link and today we are going to talk about uh, the end product of that cycle the NO3 yeah as I mentioned in my last video the end product of a nitrogen cycle in the tank is NO3 and each step from ammonia to NO2 to NO3 it's each step of those uh, nitrogen uh, substances let's say like this uh, got a different level of uh, toxicity uh, for the shrimps the ammonia will be the most toxic for the shrimps and the NO3 will be the uh, least toxic for the shrimps so uh, I think that if you got like uh, 20 maybe even to 50 ppm per liter of NO3 uh, you can get away with this uh, and the shrimps will survive but if we we'll, if you will go above that levels especially about uh, above the level of 50 you will get a lot of casualties you will get a uh, molds problem and you will get uh, the low uh, survival rate among the young shrimps so I hope that this topic which will show you the three ways of how to get rid of nitrogen uh, mainly the NO3 from the tank will be helpful if you like my channel let uh, give a hit that subscribe button uh, give a thumb up and maybe if you want to support my work want to let me develop more uh, you can uh, you can support me on patreon so let's start with the three main ideas of getting rid of nitrogen from the tank and you need to remember if i will talk about uh, the nitrogen i'm speaking in general the end product from uh, the nitrogen cycle so the no3 i think it's called nitrate uh, correct me if i'm wrong and i also due to the method that i use i also mean the nitrogen in different uh, steps for example uh, the ammonia so the first and the most common way of sorry uh, the first and the most common uh, way of getting rid of uh, the nit nitrogen from the tank is to make a water change every and each beginning aqua maniac aquarist shrimp keeper keeper will hear you need to do those water changes you need to uh, change your water frequently you will hear the different ways of doing that some of uh, some of uh, people will tell you that you have to do 50% of water change weekly some of them will uh, say you 20 percent once per month etc etc uh, you need to remember that uh, when you are doing water change in general it's the easiest way to to get uh, rid of nitrogen and any other uh, unhealthy substances from the tank water but uh, you need to remember that you only dilute that substances in the water so for example if you got 100 ppm uh, of no3 in the tank and you will make 20 percent of water change there will be still 80 ppm uh, in the tank after the water change after uh, this basic way of getting uh, rid of uh, nitrogen so 
for me this this way of getting rid of uh, ammonia isn't the best solution isn't the best way to get rid of ammonia and to manage the tank because you are only postponing uh, the tank crash if you are not making a very a high percentage uh, of water change you are postponing the moment that your tank will crash on the other hand if you are keeping shrimps and you will make 50 percent 80 percent water change uh, the shrimps will be affected and they can evil even die uh, because of the parameter swings of the ph swings uh, so it isn't the right way to do that uh, I will make a separate video about water changes, but now let's go to the uh, to the second way uh, of getting rid of uh, that NO3. And the second way you can see uh, on this part of the video that uh, there are plants. And plants can be, can be a bit tricky. The easiest plant in the shrimp tank are mosses. You need to know that mosses don't need a lot of things to live, to thrive in the shrimp tank. But on the other hand, some of the mosses are really small and they can uh, grow really slowly. So when you are using only those special mosses, especially Fisidens, uh, then the reduction of NO3 won't be so efficient. You need to remember as well that uh, the process of a uh, photosynthesis uh, needs energy and needs special special source of carbon. Yeah, so the energy source mainly is uh, the light. Uh, the stronger light you got, uh, the the faster should be the growth of the plants. On the other hand, if the plants don't get enough nutrition, the stronger light will uh, provide, will cause algae blooms. On the other hand, plants need CO2 to thrive in your aquarium. And those levels, the level of CO2, the level of uh, fertilizers, NO3, for example, which is uh, the food for the plant, need to be balanced correctly. So, so the, the second way uh, of getting rid of NO3 are the plants, but the plants need to have a good environment uh, to do that with good efficiency. For example, if my, in my tanks using my method, I got very low NO3 levels. But let's go to the next way of getting rid of uh, NO3 or nitrogen. So the last uh, way uh, of getting rid of nitrogen is using special bacteria. Yeah, and I'm not thinking about the bacteria uh, that are used in the nitrogen cycle because uh, those ba bacteria cannot consume NO3. Uh, there are two different ways to get get rid of nitrogen from the tank using bacteria. One is the denitrification process and then another is using those bacteria that will use the carbon as the source of energy and they will consume the NO3 to put their own uh, body to breathe. And the first way it's quite tricky because you need a place in your tank that will have uh, zero oxygen. Uh, there is a way to make a special filter that uh, that will uh, provide that space. You need to use a very long and very thin um, plumbing or yeah, plumbing uh, so that you will have a very low water flow through that plumbing and you will drip from that plumbing the water back. 
like one uh, drop for a second or even slower. And if you will provide this kind of NVR environment and that plumbing need to be very, very long, at least uh, a couple of meters. And uh, if, you are, if you will provide this, this type of uh, filter, uh, you can have the, the, the nitrification process in your tank. But for me, it could be very difficult and there is also some risk combined with this process. So I have never used that type of filter. Some of people say as well that you can achieve that with very thick layer of, of the soil. For me, I'm not sure if it's uh, even possible to to get uh, this type of filtration in soil that has the thickness of uh, five centimeters. Uh, I always try to find the answer in different sources. And for example, if you look at uh, salt water tanks, some of the aquarists, they keep something that is called tip sand bed and they make a special place in the sump that is uh, filled with sand, with very, very, uh, very small sand, at least eight, 10 centimeters layer. And uh, comparing the, the size of the soil and comparing the size of that sand, uh, I need to say that in my opinion, there is a big possibility that the the nitrification process goes in that sand, which can be even uh, shown by the bubbles of air, uh, which will gather in the sand and uh, which you can see. On the other hand, in the shrimp soil, due to the size of the soil, in my opinion, it's very, very hard to achieve uh, that result. So. Now we need to go to the last uh, last type of bacteria that I want to say. I want to talk about uh, those carbon eating bacteria. And this is also a method that is uh, acquired from salt water aquaristic and there it's called VSV, the vodka vinaigrette sugar vodka sugar vinaigrette method. So you are providing the carbon source for that bacteria and uh, they use that carbon provide or produce co2 and uh, and uh, they consume uh, the nitrogen from the tank if i'm not wrong they even are a bit competitive competitive to the nitrogen uh, cycle process because they consume the ammonia in the tank, but I'm not sure. I think that, that that it looks like this. So you can achieve that as well in your tanks. Uh, there are many products uh, on the market which use this type of bacteria and this method of uh, filtration for reducing the reducing the nitrogen level. You need to remember as well that those bacteria will build up uh, as a biofilm in your tank and thanks to that uh, and thanks, thanks to that the nitrogen that wasn't used as the food uh, it will be eaten by the shrimps because they love to feast on that uh, uh, that uh, biofilm the one method of uh, achieving this type of filtration, it can be quite easy, is making a Lubao. Lubao is basically a product that is uh, based on the sugar source and that is eaten by the bacteria in your tank and they that uh, provides them the good, good quality food so that, uh, that they can develop, breed and afterwards feed our shrimps. During that process, uh, there are also other organisms involved, uh, like yeast. And yeast is, is also a food for the shrimps. But you need to remember that this process will produce uh, CO2. So 
you need a good aeration for your tank. And finally, I would like to say you the way that I make the the nitrogen export from from my tank. And and I need to say, guys, that I use those three methods. Basically, mostly the two last methods. So I do a little water change uh, once uh, two we uh, two weeks period of time, and I also uh, and I also make uh, and I also use a lubao and try to uh, put some plants in my tank and from plants i especially use mosses but i will make you a separate video about the plants that you can keep with shrimps and that will manage to help you with that nitrogen process so using those three methods i am able to keep my uh, no3 level uh, very low you also need to remember that it is very important not to overfeed your tank if you need some more information about uh, some more information about how to prevent your shrimps dying please look at the video uh, in the link yeah and and i think uh, guys this is all i would like to cover about the export of no3 i think that if you use this method uh, you will have no problems with no3 in your tank and your shrimp should thrive you will also achieve some plant growth uh, in your tank and i think it can be very very helpful for you all i hope that you like this video if you did, please leave a thumb up, subscribe, hit that bell, and till the next video, and Merry Merry Christmas, my friends, and a Happy New Year. See you.